Hello there and welcome. I'm Juliana Michaels. Have you ever had an idea that you knew was crazy and would take forever, but just had to give it a try? Well, that's exactly what happened with the card I'm sharing in this video. When I saw the wheel stencil from Tim Holtz, I knew I wanted to create some kind of a rainbow of color through the stencil, and I wanted to try doing it with embossing glaze. And once I had that idea, I just had to give it a try. I knew it would be a slow, time-consuming process that would probably take forever, but I had to give it a try. And once I started and could see the potential, I had to keep going. In the end, it turned out to be one of my favorite cards I've made recently, and I think the end result was worth the time it took to create it. As always, feel free to use what you have in your stash to follow along with me. But if you're interested in any of the supplies I used in the video, you can find the full supply list with links in the description box below. To find the list, click on the word more below the title of the video. It will expand the text box and you will then see the links. And when you shop through those links, you are supporting me and I really appreciate that so very much. Now let's get on with the making. The supplies I used to create this card is the wheel stencil from Tim Holtz and the Curiosity Shop stamp set. The ink I'm using is archival ink. You'll need some sort of waterproof ink to do the stamping with of the images. I also used an embossing ink. I, the one I use is Versamark uh, watermark ink, but any kind of an embossing ink would work. And then you need some sort of little sponge applicator to apply the ink with. I recommend using something, either a piece of computer paper folded in half or even a coffee filter to put underneath to catch the embossing powder so that it's not getting everywhere. You'll also need some sort of temporary repositionable tape that you can use to mask off the areas and help hold your stencil down in place. I also like to use this temporary adhesive from scrapbook.com to help hold my paper steady so that it doesn't slide around on my craft mat. And then embossing glaze. And as you can see, I kind of have all the colors here. I have them uh, listed in my blog post and they are linked down in the supply list. But the colors I used are Candied Apple, Lumberjack Plaid, Aged Mahogany for the reds. For the oranges, I used Spiced Marmalade, Rusty Hinge, and Crackling Campfire. For the yellows, I used uh, Squeezed Lemonade, Fossilized Amber, and Wild Honey. For the greens, I used Peeled Paint, Mowed Lawn, and Rustic Wilderness. For the blues, I used Speckled Egg, Chipped Sapphire, and Faded Jeans. And for the purples, I used Wilted Violet, Seedless Preserves, and Villainous Potion. So what I've done is taken a smooth piece of white cardstock and placed it into my stamping platform. And then I've taken various images from the Curiosity Shop stamp set and kind of laid them out across the background to kind of create my own pattern. And now I'm going to just close this and pick up those stamps. And... That one moved just a little bit, so I'll straighten him back up. And then now we're just going to ink that up with the Black Soot Archival ink. Stamp that one more time just to get a good, nice, good impression. Here we are. Okay. So then the next thing we want to do is going to take this and dry it 
with the heat tool or either let it sit and air dry for a little while because before we move on to the next step, you want this ink to be completely dry. So now that our paper is dry, I actually ended up cutting this down to four by five and a quarter inches so that I could layer it onto another piece of solid cardstock. And now we're gonna do the stencil work. And to do that, we're gonna be working with this wheel stencil from Tim Holtz. And I'm gonna actually be flipping it over because I want the design to come from this direction, but you could certainly do it from the other way. So first things, I'm gonna put a little temporary adhesive on the back side of the card, just so that I can use that to help hold it in place a little bit while I'm working. And then I'm gonna use some mint tape here to help hold the stencil in place and then to be able to line it back up again. So now I'm just gonna kind of center that design on the card here. And then I'm just gonna use this just to help kind of create a way that I can flip, flip this up and down if I want to. And then I'm just gonna use some tape here on the sides as well. Um, I'm not using the sticky mat for this because we're going to be working with the embossing glazes and the pow trying to clean the powder off of those sticky mats is not my favorite thing to do. So that's why I'm doing it this way. So, and then before we begin applying the ink, we're also going to mask off the section here between the next section. So you'll need, you know, you'll need more of this tape um, to block off the sections as we go, but I will be showing you that. So for the ink, we're going to be using embossing ink. This is just a clear embossing ink, and I'm using just a little finger dauber sponge to apply the ink. And just going to tap that on here. Get a nice coverage over each of the openings. Set that up to the side. And then we're gonna just peel this up here. And now what we're gonna do is get a piece of computer paper or printer paper. I'm gonna place that underneath my design here. And now we're gonna start applying the embossing powders and I'm gonna start with the reds here. And I'm gonna use candied apple, lumberjack plaid, and aged mahogany. And we're just gonna take a little, like your finger, and then just sprinkle it onto the design and where that powder is. And what I'm doing is just kind of thinking about where, where those colors would be. Just, just to kind of spread them out across the design because there's not a lot of this um, section showing. I'm not doing a lot of that aged mahogany because I kind of want it to go in a gradient from light to dark. So we're gonna that. Let's add a little more of this one here. Maybe a little more candied apple down here. And I know it's a little bit, it's hard to see kind of where you're putting the powder, especially for this first one, because you don't really have anything if you're using that clear ink. But So we're just going to pick that up, tap this around a little bit. And you can kind of start seeing where that, where it's sticking there. And you can add a little bit more if you, if you feel like you need to. And just tap off the excess. And then if you've got some powder in some areas where you don't want it, 
um, you just want to make sure you tap it off real good and then you can also use a little brush to kind of wipe off some of that excess powder okay I'm gonna set that to the side here and then we're gonna put these powders away and then you can put this excess powder, you know, if you wanted to save that for something, you could put it in some other container or you can just um, dispose of it. And then you're gonna take your heat embossing gun and melt the powder. There is our first section. And now we're just gonna repeat that process going into the next color here. So we're gonna remove that mask section. So what you're gonna do now is just get the paper back in place and then just line up your stencil with the with that first area. And then kind of get everything stuck back down again. And now you're gonna mask off that side. So we don't wanna get any ink or powder over there. And then you're gonna need another piece of that masking tape or mint tape, whichever, or washi tape, whatever you're, you're using. And you're gonna do off this next section and now we're gonna apply the embossing ink to that area. And because we are gonna go in rainbow order, for this section, we are going to do the orange. Pick that up, put that back over our paper, and then for the orange colors, I'm using wild or uh, spiced marmalade crackling campfire and rusty hinge and i kind of like to open them from like in the order that i'm going to apply them so like that's the darkest the rusty hinge and then the crackling campfire and then this is the spiced marmalade so if you tilt the paper you'll be able to see a little bit of the shine from that embossing powder so or from that embossing ink so that'll let you kind of have a little bit of a guide of where to put the colors. So again, I'm gonna start off with that lighter color down here towards the bottom. And then I'll put a little bit of the crackling campfire here in the middle. And then some rusty hinge here across the top. And then we'll just continue sprinkling that on, working that color across this section here. And then, you know, as you get close to the next color, you can just, those colors are gonna kind of start blending a little bit, which is fine. That's kind of the fun thing about the embossing glaze because it's a translucent embossing powder. It will blend and you'll see that here a little bit more once I heat emboss this. So then you can just kind of tap that around, make sure you got everything covered up really good and then tap off the excess. There you go. Then we can put these away. And then again, you can use that, you know, use a little brush to wipe off any of that excess powder. And then you're gonna heat, heat emboss that with the uh, heat gun again. And here you can start to see how those colors will kind of blend into each other when they're layered on top of each other. And now I'm just gonna repeat that process for the remaining colors of the rainbow. Yeah, 
And the colors I'm using here are squeezed lemonade, wild honey, and fossilized amber. So the colors I'm using here for the green are Peeled Paint, Mowed Lawn, and Rustic Wilderness. I'm just adding a little extra tape because the um, paper is starting to just warp a little bit from the heat embossing. It will flatten out though once you adhere it to your card base. And the colors I'm using for the blue are speckled egg, prize ribbon, and chipped sapphire. And the colors I'm using for purple are Wilted Violet, Sealess Preserves, and Villainous Potion. And here is a look at our finished rainbow background. To finish off the card, I added some black ink splatters. I then adhered the background to a piece of black cardstock. For the sentiment, I stamped hello from the Curiosity Shop stamp set, trimmed them into little strips, and then adhered them with double-sided foam adhesive to create a bit of dimension. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you can join me on a more regular basis. Hit the like if you enjoyed this video, and if you want to join me on my other social media platforms, you can find the links to those in the description box below. Also, feel free to leave me a comment if you have any questions or if there's something you'd love to share with me and our community. I'll see you in the comments below and in the next video. Until next time, stay crafty, my friend.